telling me a little about yourself? Uh, well, my name's Jose Cardenas. Um, by trade, I'm a director of photography, cinematographer. Um, been doing that for well over 20 years or so, and been doing uh, commercials, documentaries, uh, did some uh, television shows, a couple feature films. Uh, Quite a variety of different things, quite frankly. Also, currently teach at Bowling Green State University. I teach television uh, production. I also teach uh, some film classes as well on occasion. When and how did you decide to get into the film business, and what path did you decide to take to get there? I've been interested in movies since I can ever remember. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember my mom being not too happy, spending countless hours watching TV all the time. Um, but I always did my homework because that was the thing. I used to watch Creature Feature, Chiller Theater on Saturday nights. As long as I could get up the next day, my parents didn't mind. So um, I just happened to love um, scary movies. I think when I really started taking it serious when I was um, probably in seventh grade, I think it was, we had to write a research paper and I really didn't know what to do it on. It finally dawned on me, I'd just write something on how movies are made, and that was really captivating, and it really led me into that summer after seventh grade, cutting grass, things like that to save money to get a Super 8 camera and projector, and uh, that's when I started shooting. You know, I'd put music to it usually with a cassette, you know, audio cassette, and try to cue it up. I mean, you can't do talk easily because it'd float off, but uh, it was cool. And I started editing. Um, uh, with the regular uh, razor blade type thing, these band-aid yeah. splices, and, and everything that time I did did something, I realized that, you know, like, wow, I could do this and, um, without kind of realizing that I was later on, like, oh, cutting, well, that's cutting on action, that's cutting from a wide shot to a close-up, it was just detailed shots. Mm -hmm. I really wasn't sure a lot what I was doing, but uh, kind of learning as I went along. Are there any people or role models that influenced you, and um, what inspired you to get into filmmaking? Uh, as far as cinematography work, I mean, I'm a big, um, I love the work of uh, Torrio Strato. Uh, the colors uh, that he uses are just, you know, just blow me away. And, and, and the way he talks about uh, cinematography and photography is, is, just, is just completely awesome and very, very inspiring. <laughs> Nestor Almendros, uh, another cinematographer, um, is, is a big um, um, influence, I believe, as well as Sven Nyquist and, um, and a few others. Uh, definitely uh, the Hammer films were a big influence to me, as well as a lot of the uh, Italian horror films that I watched because of the colors in them. And I use a lot of gels mm -hmm. uh, in my still photography as well. And uh, yeah, I just talked earlier about Suspiria. Yeah. Those colors are just like, whoa. How did you get into teaching film and what did you like, what do you like most about it? Well, teaching um, came up, really, literally fell on my lap. <clears throat> I was shooting a documentary for a PBS um, local and one of the students came over and started talking to me because he you knew I was a DP mm -hmm. and uh, started talking film work. This happened to be Jay Ellison. Jay Ellison, who <laughs> I guess a year ago very much to this day. We were in Medina, Ohio shooting uh, clothes for the season. And so he graduated from here, Bowling Green State University, um, formed his company, Shadowcast Pictures, and uh, put together um, his first feature film, Clothes for the Season. And he asked me to be the director of photography. Uh, awesome, yeah. really awesome. Started talking to a couple of my friends, and we ended up putting together a workshop, which we had for five years here. You know, we have it on occasion. Um, the film workshop is 35 millimeter predominantly. Yeah, that, and it's been a three week workshop, um, 10, 12 hour days, for five days. Very intense, mm -hmm. very hands on. Um, some of the folks here at Bowling Green asked if I was interested in teaching and helping to get the equipment acquired to create film production again at Bowling Green State University. Mm -hmm. And that was like six years ago, so mm -hmm. uh, I kind of stayed on board and I do enjoy it. It's fun working with students. Uh, that are very passionate about doing this. Mm -hmm. Jay Ellison, of course. Um, he, he was awesome seeing him. He was my first student. I moved on and went to Los Angeles, and it's like, wow, oh, yeah, that's awesome. Yes, we should do. And you know, see him come in and you know, ready to yeah, learn and do projects. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Watch him camp out here in the department and edit all day long, and you know, ask if you know, hey, can I keep get the equipment for the weekend or whatever, you know? Yeah. And so yeah, for those that really really want to do it, I try to. Um, make things happen so that they can continue and do the things that they want to do. Um, what advice would you give a young person or student who wants to get into the business? The biggest advice is to get involved in every single aspect that you can. Also make tons of movies. 
I mean, don't, don't stop. Yeah. I mean, you were in the video realm now. It, I, mean, I don't think there's any excuse of experimenting like crazy. You know, it's like um, I've been on. I, I sometimes will visit sets where you know students are making films or whatever. And it's just fun to do. And you know, a lot of times the uh, conversation will go, "Well, should we do it this way or that way? Do it both ways. Yeah. Decide later." You know, I mean, it, it's really good discipline to have that idea of where you want to go because. Um, you know, you may be using school equipment right now or something mm -hmm. like that, but ultimately, you know, you're going to be renting equipment, have a crew there and all that, and, you know, you should have a good idea of what you're going to do. Some of the best advice came from um, um, Robert Rodriguez's book. Uh, uh, Robert 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 yeah. yeah, that's it, yeah. And one of those, he says, you know, oh, this is really cool. He says, you know, make a movie, you know, close your eyes, think of your own theater, and, and imagine what would you like to see. And mm -hmm. gosh, that's your shot. Yeah. The shot list right there it makes so much sense. Yeah, imagine what, what would you expect to see, or sometimes not see, mm -hmm. because you're using sound effects or music, and and it's kind of creepy because I oh I can't you know I can't see what's going on. So you you know you have the audience in suspense. So finding the friends that want to make movies yeah. to be your crew, not your roommates <laughs> that are business majors, or yeah. that'd be kind of fun. Yeah, that's great, but they're not as passionate and. You know, after two hours of you know shooting, I'm like, oh, are we done yet? Because I thought this was only a ten-minute short film. Where do you think the op are the opportunities for people getting into the industry today? Pretty much, you know, you have a lot of outlets today. I mean, my gosh, on television, mm -hmm. the cable outlets, specialized stations and channels and everything, are just endless. You also, of course, have online stuff, um, which is great. You have self-distribution, which you didn't yeah. have when I was there. You still have, you know, of course, DVD distribution and the traditional um, theatrical and all that. But as far as your self-distribution, I think that is the way to go. I think the opportunities are there for the taking with, because of self-distribution, online distribution. Um, <clears throat> we, I don't think there's any excuse other than, hey, we tried this, but our, our approach was not there. Mm -hmm. So you look back and you regroup. And you say, what should we have done, or what can we do, or you know, either to fix this one, or to, hey, this was a great learning experience. Let's press on and try to, you know, learn from this and do our next one. Mm -hmm. And those those costs are not there like they used to be. Mm -hmm. They're still there in the higher end stuff, of yeah. course, but it allows you to make something your thing, your project, not somebody else. If, we're, if we were looking to the future of filmmaking, what are some of the, the changes you see in the next five or ten years? Well, we're seeing them daily, um, <laughs> really. Yeah. Um, and some of the things that we're seeing today are, of course, uh, more accessible equipment. Mm -hmm. Composition, your exposure, and all that is not going to change whether I have a $5,000 camera mm -hmm. or a $100,000 camera. Yeah. It really isn't. That's why, as far as a person that's trying to learn to direct, and, and especially do camera and all that, gives them those opportunities to really be able to do that because, you know, your lighting is, is you know, is your lighting and your composition and your, and your visual storytelling. And there are small lightweight cameras, which is awesome too, mm -hmm. because you can put those cameras anywhere. Yeah. You know, you don't have to like, oh, this thing weighs 50 pounds and, and I wish we had this or wish we had that. That's just it. You don't. So you make those things, and you got to be very innovative. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the production values, you know, of whether it's you know clamping your camera on on a two by four and having two people read the wood. Oh yeah. A la, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, Evil Dead. Yeah. Um, shoot, that works. Yeah. Sometimes low tech is, is sometimes the most effective.